Russia could deploy 200 to 300 different types of weapons to target Ukrainian nuclear power plants. Ukrainian expert Ole Katkov said this. Regarding Russia's capabilities and stockpiles of weapons, if the Russians do attack Ukrainian nuclear power plants, it will be a highly concentrated attack. Obviously, it will likely not be a strike on the power units themselves, but rather on the infrastructure to disable the nuclear power plants. However, it would still constitute a strike on a nuclear facility. For such an attack, the Russians could use more than 100 aircraft of various types. Drones will be employed to overload our air defense system, along with cruise and high-speed missiles of the Kinzhal type. It is important to understand one thing here. Any air and missile defense can be breached, no matter how dense it is. Katkov explained on Espresso TV. The expert emphasized that Ukraine's air defense and missile defense systems may not be able to cope with a Russian attack on the nuclear power plant. There is always the question of the number of loaded missiles in air defense systems and the quantity of air defense systems available. Even if we allocate one Patriot system for each of our nuclear power plants, those systems also require cover. Despite all this, due to the number of weapons that the enemy could deploy, air defense and missile defense systems may not be able to shoot down all of these air targets. Therefore, there is a high probability that the Russian forces could use 200 to 300 missiles and UAVs to attack Ukrainian nuclear power plants, he added. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky recently said that Russia is planning to attack Ukrainian nuclear power plants and disconnect them from the energy grid. Radiation does not respect state borders, Zelensky said in his address to the United General Assembly in New York. Since Russia can't defeat our people's resistance on the battlefield, Zelensky said Russian President Vladimir Putin is looking for other ways to break the Ukrainian spirit. In his speech, Zelensky recalled the horrifying moment in the first weeks of the war when Russian attacks on the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant, the largest in Europe, stirred fears among Ukrainians of another Chernobyl-style disaster. No one could know how Russian strikes on the nuclear facility would end, and everyone in Ukraine was reminded of what Chernobyl means, he said. State Kremlin propaganda telling about the successes of the Russian army at the front and about 100% supplies lies and deceives Russians. Russian officer Ivan Otrakovsky refuted the lies of state propaganda telling in an interview with a Russian blogger about serious problems of the occupiers at the front. Channel One says that everything is there at the front. This is all a huge lie. In reality, there are big problems in the army, he said. According to him, the statements of Russian Z-War correspondents about the overwhelming superiority of Russians in drones and successful military production do not correspond to reality. In reality, the situation in Russian units is difficult. Recently, Russian military personnel reported new losses on the front where the Ukrainian armed forces eliminated an entire unit of occupiers. Russian military personnel continue to suffer heavy losses at the front, as military propagandists write online. During the offensive on Ukrainian positions in Donbass, Russian units suffer significant losses. The author of the Telegram channel, Zov Shkipera, reported that a whole group of Russian servicemen died in a battle with the Ukrainian army at the front. I am sad to report that our soldiers fell in an unequal battle with the Ukrainian armed forces. The entire group perished. Some, Kutish, Adler, Viskar, sleep peacefully, brothers, he wrote. The Z-War correspondent admitted that it was precisely this unit that the Russians recently collected money for an electronic warfare system, but this did not save them from destruction. Sorry guys, the propagandist added. Social media users emphasize that the Russian army command is throwing units into battle without regard for losses. Ukraine regularly releases updates on Russian losses since Vladimir Putin launched a full-scale invasion of its Eastern European neighbor in February 2022. At present, Russian forces continue to push forward in the Donbass, focusing on Pokrovsk and Volodar, two key logistical and defensive points for Ukraine. Volodar, a strategic town southwest of Donetsk, has been a target since 2014, with Russian forces making tactical gains despite suffering heavy losses. The Battle of Volodar, a linchpin in Ukraine's defenses, has cost Russia tens of thousands of men and substantial military equipment. The Russian military continues to press forward in the Donbass, making tactical gains and inching closer to important targets. Pokrovsk is one of those targets.
A key logistical point for the Ukrainian military, Pokrovsk, is an important part of the Ukrainian defense line. The Russian forces are within a few miles of the urban center and continue to press for its capture. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky used his address to the UN General Assembly Wednesday to highlight fears of a nuclear incident as his country battles Russian aggression. The Ukrainian leader raised alarm over Russia's potential actions against his country stressing, in Ukraine, we know exactly what we are dealing with. He urged global leaders Wednesday to stand with his country and and thank them for their support more than two years into Russia's war. Thank you very much, dear leaders, your excellencies. Today I want to tell you about day that has already passed and a day that must never come. On the night of March 4th, 2022, I received one of the most terrifying reports since the beginning of a full-scale Russian invasion against Ukraine. The report was about Russian tanks firing directly at the buildings of our Ukrainian nuclear power plant, the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant, the largest one in Europe, six nuclear reactors. The Russian army stormed this facility just as brutally as any other during this war, without thinking about the consequences, possibly disastrous. This was one of the most horrifying moments of the war, when no one could know how Russian strikes on the nuclear facility would end, and everyone in Ukraine was reminded of what Chernobyl means. Now, the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant remains occupied by Russian forces, unfortunately, and it's at risk of a nuclear incident. This is the major source of radiation danger in Europe, possibly in the world. That's why in the peace formula I presented the first point is about nuclear safety. In Ukraine, we know exactly what we are dealing with. And I want to thank you, the General Assembly members, for adopting a resolution in July this year on the safety of nuclear facilities in Ukraine.